Yo, Yo, what's up everybody? So you might have seen that we've made a bunch of vlogs from the north, east, west, but today we are in the south. Yeah, we're doing something a little bit random first off. It's a <laughs> mooncake festival right now. And uh, we're going to a friend's house because they've just made us some mooncakes. So. <laughs> well, it wasn't specifically for us, but they did say come get it. So, so yeah, we're taking that offer. We are in South Auckland though, so it starts from here. Thank you, Kawan Ting Ting. <laughs> Yo, what's up? <laughs> Our friends are a little camera shy, but look at this amazing mooncake that Ting Ting baked. Yeah, this, this is not store bought. Ting Ting made every single one of these. And made. So we've got some that is just red bean, and then another version that has got salted egg in it too. Yeah, if you hear that little uh, squeak, that's uh, that's Alison. <laughs> Their daughter. Should we dig into these? Yeah, let's dig in. Cheers. Mooncake cheers. <laughs> Mm. The inside is super moist, which is what you hope for in a mooncake. But then you bite into that lovely salty yellow egg yolk. But the pastry as well is really yummy. Ah, oh, that's a great mooncake. Mm -hmm. Also, we were talking this morning to our mom and also to we were wondering why do we celebrate mooncake festival? Because it's a big Asian culture thing. Mm. We don't know. <laughs> Oh Everyone's God. just there for the mooncakes. <laughs> we are, but apparently there's a story about how in the past mm. Mongolians also used to send messages through mooncakes. No, mm -hmm. the Chinese would send messages in the mooncakes oh. about how to rebel against the Mongolians. I see. We have no idea if that's true. So if any of you guys know why we actually celebrate Mooncake Festival, Moon Festival, Mid-Autumn Festival, all the same thing, please let us know in the comments below. Yeah, and if you're wondering, about the plants behind us. I gotta do a massive shout out to my bro Kawa, mm. uh, who owns this company called Copia Ceramics. They sell minimalist pots online. And they are super nice looking. So check them out. We'll leave the link in the description below as well. Yeah, Kawa and I, uh, our love for plants go way back. Known Kawa since he was born, so gotta, <laughs> gotta give my bro a shout out on that one. Now we're heading over to the largest uh, Buddhist temple in New Zealand. Yes, Po Guan San. Yes. And it's just down the road. We want to make the most of this beautiful weather because apparently it was supposed to have Arctic blasts today. <laughs> We've arrived at Fo Guan San Temple. We reached out to them because normally you're not actually allowed to film inside and they very graciously granted us special permission. Um, there are some things to note if you are coming here as well. You gotta wear pants. No shorts or jandals for Peter today. And since it is still level two, you do need a mask here just for your own safety and for those around you as well. So, shall we head in? We're just gonna meet up with um, someone now. And uh, apparently we're gonna get a bit of a tour around yeah. and maybe even learn about some of the things that's inside the temple. So when Yen and I first arrived at this temple, we paid our respects to Lady Guan Yin, who's at the front. We took a walk through the courtyard area and through the field of merit. Yeah. And then we reached this final shrine. This is the main shrine. And this is where the Sakyamuni Buddha resides. Something that's really amazing is that all these Buddhas that you see behind are handcrafted individually from local materials here in New Zealand and it's volcanic rock. Each of the little Buddhas have just a slight variation on how they look because it is handcrafted. But yeah, it's a very nice sight to see. One of the special perks that we got granted was that because we came a little bit late, this particular exhibition is closed because it's only open from 9am to 1pm. But thankfully we were allowed inside so we get to see this all by ourselves. This exhibition is called After a Thousand Miles and it is running until the end of November. It is free for the public to view as well, which is amazing. And all these artworks and sculptures are done by a single Taiwanese artist. I'll put the name down here. So with one of these lights, you can pick whichever tree you would like to make your wish and place it under. All of them have something a little bit different. Yeah, this one is Give Others Joy. The other one behind you is Give Others Hope. We raise the candle, make a wish, and then we are done. Open your eyes and place the candle down. And then join your palms, and then collect one of the wisdom words. 
Sharing your joy is the, I can't say this word, bod bodhisattva. Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva way. Sharing your blessing is highly to be praised. Admitting your error is a virtue. Preventing evil, doing good, and purifying body and mind is Buddhist practice. So on these walls are a bunch of wishes, apparently 60,000 in total. That is incredible. So there's so many in this room that they've gone out outside and Yen and I are now going to write our right wishes. Our wish. <laughs> Where we are right now is the courtyard and these are cherry blossoms. If you come in November, they should be fully bloomed. And this is where Peter and I actually took our wedding photos. Like eight years ago. In November 21 and 22 on that weekend, there's a cherry tree festival. So it's definitely a cool thing to check out. Come visit, especially locals, because if you didn't know this place exists, now you do. And hopefully you also know the different ways to pay respect. Right now, we are headed over to the Auckland Botanic Gardens. So we just wanted to say a huge thank you to Fo Guang Sang Temple for allowing us to come here today all your teachings and also, of course, letting us film. We've made our way over to the Botanic Gardens now. Yen and I have heard that there are some cherry blossoms. We're on a mission to go look for some since we went to the Waikato Cherry Blossom Festival last weekend. Yeah, we've been on a hunt in yeah. Auckland to find you guys a good place to look at cherry blossoms. We went to Cornwall Park, normally that's the spot. Yeah, unfortunately we're either too early or they might have blown away, we're not sure. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Botanic Garden, fingers crossed, <laughs> you guys might be in luck here. As you can see, Peter is back into shorts and jandals. Back in shorts, <laughs> back in jandals, yeah! <laughs> made our way to the visitor center just because of our past track record of <laughs> getting lost. Now what's really surprising is how busy this place yeah. is. Well it is school holidays now so yesterday was the last day of the term so that could be why lots of families out with kids and that sort of thing. Wow look at that. It is some big grounds. I think it was 64 hectares from memory. You can see these cherry blossom trees just peeking just over there. Looks like we have found it and we're in luck because they do look like there are some flowers. So we're just walking down the path and we can already see a bunch of the cherry blossom trees on our left side. Yes, they're not fully in bloom yet unfortunately but by the time this video comes out hopefully they are. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yay. We found some like not so bloomed Sakura trees, but right behind us is a very plump, plush looking one. <laughs> it's uh, pretty impressive to see no matter how many times you see it. And if you are coming to the Botana Gardens, it's in the middle of like South Auckland. This is Manurewa and this is a dog friendly park as well. So as long as you have a leash, your four legged friend will also be all good. And other thing is it's free entry. Free entry, which is always a plus. So Yen and I are feeling a little bit on the pickish side now. So we're going to go into Papakura to uh, see if we can find a kind of famous place to go eat at now. Oh yeah, so it does look like it's starting to get a bit grey now, so I'm glad we managed to enjoy a day of sunshine while it was out. So the place that we're headed to is called Sate Noodle House, and it is somewhere that a polytuber friend of ours, hey it's Dolo, oh I think you've changed your name, name now to it's Crystal KS. Dolo and Bobby, thank you guys for always raving on about this place, glad that we're coming here to check it out. But also one of our really big supporters, Real G, Hannah and Penny, thank you guys for also highly recommending this place to us. We're super excited to finally get to eat it now that we are here in South Auckland. is that it is a family owned business. It is owned by a guy called Gun and he is from Cambodia. His parents actually survived the Khmer Rouge back in 1983 I believe it was which is incredible. Came to New Zealand with zero dollars and look at where they are today. It is amazing. So the food has arrived. It smells incredible and we are starving <laughs> so we really want to dig in. We've got the chicken Thai red curry. This is one of Dolo's favorites and recommendations. 
Check a little bit of sauce on. That is really, really delicious red curry. It has got only a tiny faint bit of spice, but it's also very, uh, how do you say, like creamy, it's smooth, but it's also salty as well, a little bit sweet, which I love. <laughs> So yeah, I, I need to eat a bit more for us to find my words. Hitting the spot, eh? It is very yum. Ooh, that smells fantastic. <laughs> Dolo and Penny recommended this dish, the braised pork belly, and I've been thinking about it all day. Yeah. I'm gonna pick a nice succulent piece up. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Totally hits the spot, wow. right? That's getting me in all the right places. <laughs> the perfect amount of saltiness, the perfect amount of sweetness. Asian pork belly always has that little bit of extra sweetness in there too. The fatty part just melts right on your tongue. Oh man, this is exactly what we needed after a long day. And we've got a satay stick as well, which is Bob's recommendation. Yes, look at those chicken satays. Wow. Mm. <laughs> oh man. Double mmm for that one because that is delicious. The sauce is a little bit creamy. You can taste the right amount of saltiness and sweetness once again. Leaning slightly towards the sweet side, but amazing. Whew, that was a great meal. Yeah, super satisfied. Reminds us of the time that we stayed in Cambodia for one month. Oh yeah, because of all the artwork or eh? the Uncle Wat. Yeah, especially Uncle Wat was one of my favorite places, one of the eight wonders of the world. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode and hanging out with us today from the mooncakes at Kawan Ting Ting's house to the botanic gardens yeah. and the temple. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, please you know what to do. Drop us a good like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment. We love hearing from you and we will catch you on the next one next over time. and out from South Auckland. <laughs> See ya.